Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about constant pressure calorimetry. Now constant pressure calorimetry is a way by which you can measure delta H for a chemical reaction. So remember, delta H, that's the change in enthalpy, which is equivalent to the amount of heat that is either absorbed by the system or released by the system under conditions of constant pressure. So as you've probably already guessed, this is an apparatus that can be used to find delta H for a chemical reaction. This is a constant pressure calorimeter. And it's a very, very simple design. You have these two foam cups. One is placed inside the other. So that provides a very insulated sort of environment to keep the inside of the cup closed off from the rest of the laboratory environment. And then sitting on top of those cups, you have a loose fitting cork lid. So the reason why the lid fits loosely is to make sure that the pressure does not change over the course of the reaction. If you were to have products that were gases, as you make more gas inside that cup, you would normally you would get an increase in pressure. That is, if the lid was fitting on tightly. But since the lid fits on loosely, there are no changes in pressure, and so we have constant pressure conditions uh, within this system. So what's going on here is you got basically a reaction that's taking place inside these cups. Uh, normally the reaction will take place in a solution, and then to stir that solution around and make sure that all of those reactants react into products, you have a glass stirring rod, so that helps speed up the chemical reaction. And then of course you've got a thermometer inserted into the cups so that you can measure the temperature throughout the chemical reaction. So this is a basic breakdown of the steps that are used to find delta H for a chemical reaction. So what you would do is you would measure the mass of your reactants and you would also measure the mass of your solvent. Remember the solvent is going to be the stuff that's dissolving the reactants in order to make that solution because again the reaction is taking place within a solution. And then what you'd also do is you would determine the heat of the specific heat rather of your solution and normally the specific heat of the solution is understood to be the, exactly equal to the specific heat of water, which is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. So again, most, in most situations, you're assuming that the specific heat of your solution is the same as the specific heat of just regular old liquid water, 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. And then finally, you would run that chemical reaction and then that chemical reaction is going to have a temperature change. Now the temperature could increase. That tells you that you're, you have an exothermic reaction. Energy is being released into the surroundings. Or the temperature could decrease and that means you have an endothermic reaction. One that takes in energy from that solution, from the surroundings. So with all of these pieces of knowledge, the mass of your solution, the specific heat, and the temperature change, you'll be in a, in a position where you can calculate the heat of your solution. So let's say we have an exothermic chemical reaction. The reactants, uh, as they get converted to, into products, are going to release heat into that solution. Okay, so the solution is actually going to absorb heat. And we can calculate how much heat is absorbed by the solution it's going to be the product of the mass of the solution, M-S-O-L-N there. It's going to be a product of that times the specific heat of the solution. So that's C sub S for the solution. And then the third term that you multiply these two things by is going to be delta T, the change in temperature, which of course was measured using your thermometer. So this formula allows you to calculate the amount of heat that is absorbed by the solution from the reactants as they get converted into products. And then once you know that, you can actually find the heat of reaction. So in order to find the heat of reaction, we're making a very important approximation. We're approximating such that the solution is all of the surroundings. The reactants and the products are the system, and the solution is the only component of the surroundings. And of course, it's not necessarily the only component of the surroundings because you have the rest of the universe to consider. But again, because you have that insulated environment, it makes for a pretty good approximation. So what I'm trying to say is that all of the heat that was absorbed by the solution, that exact amount of heat is going to be the amount of heat that's released by the reactants as they get turned into products. So in other words, to find the heat for this reaction, which under conditions of constant pressure is equal to delta H for the reaction, it's simply going to be the opposite or negative heat 
of the solution. So again, all this equation is saying is that whatever heat that was absorbed by the solution is the exact amount of heat that was released by the chemical reaction. So it's a pretty long and involved process, and before we end the video, we're going to do a problem where we figure out delta H for a chemical reaction. So this problem says that we have zinc reacting with hydrochloric acid according to the following balanced equation. <clears throat> okay, so we have zinc, we have hydrochloric acid. It's going to react together to make zinc chloride, ZnCl2, and it's also going to make hydrogen gas. And it says that we have 2.441 grams of zinc, and it's combined with enough HCl to make 50.00 milliliters of solution. And then during the reaction, the temperature of the solution is going to rise from 25.0 degrees Celsius to 39.4 degrees Celsius. And finally, we are asked to find delta H for the reaction as written. So if this chemical reaction takes place as written, where we have one mole of zinc reacting with two moles of HCl to make one mole of ZnCl2 and one mole of H2, we got to find the amount of heat that's absorbed or released uh, when this reaction occurs as it, is, as it is written by that chemical equation. And one last thing, we're going to assume that the reaction goes to completion and that the density and the specific heat of the solution are the same as the density and the specific heat of water. Okay, so that was certainly a mouthful. So when I get really long-winded problems like this, I like to sort of, you know, look at all my information and start assigning symbols, assigning notation uh, to make sure I know all the pieces of the puzzle as I try to attempt to put it together. And so we're going to do that. So again, we have this balanced chemical equation here. That's one important piece of information. The problem says that the amount of zinc, or excuse me, the mass of zinc is going to be 2.441 grams. It also says that there's enough HCl to make 50.00 milliliters of the solution. <clears throat> We can calculate the, the change in temperature, or delta T, very simply by simply taking the final temperature and subtracting away the initial temperature, so 39.4 degrees Celsius minus 25.0 degrees Celsius, and that's going to give us 14.4 degrees Celsius. And then, remember, we're also assuming that the density and the specific heat are the same as that of water, and so the density of water is going to be 1.00 grams per milliliter, and the specific heat of water is going to be 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. So that specific heat of water term, it comes up a lot uh, when you do thermochemistry problems, so that might just be one that you want to commit to memory. To memory. And of course, if you practice enough, you're going to just remember it by default. So again, what we're trying to do is determine the amount of heat absorbed by the solution. And so that's our first step. So we ultimately we need to use this equation where we have the product of the mass, the specific heat, and the temperature change. Well, we know the specific heat of the solution. Again, that's just going to be the specific heat of water, 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Uh, we were able to figure out delta T, easy, right? Just final minus initial temperature. Uh, but what we don't have is the mass of the solution. But we do have the volume and we do have the density, so we can figure out the mass quite easily. So we don't have that, but we need it. So again, we start out with our 50.00 milliliters of solution. I can use the density of the solution as a conversion factor. So again, it's 1.00 grams per milliliter. So it's 1.00 grams per one milliliter. So I put that one milliliter on the bottom of the conversion factor, the 1.00 grams on top. The milliliter units are going to cancel, and I'm going to get 50.0 grams of solution. And so now we do have the mass of the solution. It's 50.0 grams. And so now we have all three of those pieces. We can calculate the amount of heat absorbed by the solution. So again, it's the mass times the specific heat times the temperature change. So it's 50.0 grams times 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius times 14.4 degrees Celsius. The grams are going to cancel. The degrees Celsius are also going to cancel. And that's going to be equal to 3.01 times 10 to the third joules. And just to make this a little cleaner and nicer to look at, I'm going to convert this into kilojoules by simply dividing by 1,000. So I've sort of skipped that conversion step. Normally I would write it in, but for the sake of time, I've skipped that step. And so the amount of heat absorbed by the solution is going to be 3.01 kilojoules. Now it's very easy to figure out the amount of heat released by the chemical reaction. It's simply going to be the opposite of the amount of heat absorbed by the solution. So we simply take the negative of the heat of solution. And so for the heat of reaction, we're going to get negative 3.01 kilojoules.
So we just figured out how much heat was given off by this chemical reaction in particular. But if we go back all the way to the problem, I think it was slide three, yes. So it's the third slide in this presentation. It's asking us to find delta H for the chemical reaction as written. So again, we're trying to find out how much heat is released when one mole of zinc reacts with two moles of HCl to make one mole of zinc chloride and one mole of hydrogen. And so what we need to do is what we need to do is to take that heat of reaction and we need to divide it by the amount of mole, the amount of zinc in moles that actually reacted. So we have the heat of reaction, again that's negative 3.01 kilojoules. To calculate the moles of zinc that reacted, we're going to take the mass of zinc, which remember that was the first thing that was given to us, 2.441 grams of zinc, and we're going to convert that into moles of zinc using the molar mass of zinc given from the periodic table, which is 65.41 grams of zinc for every one mole of zinc. So we, if we set up our conversion factor like this, where we take the mass of zinc and divide it by the molar mass of zinc, those grams are going to cancel, and our answer is going to be reported in kilojoules per mole. And once we uh, crunch that all into a calculator, we're going to round that to three significant figures, and we're going to get negative 80.7 kilojoules per mole. So we just figured out how much energy is released into the surroundings when one mole of zinc reacts with two moles of HCl to make one mole of zinc chloride and one mole of hydrogen gas. And since the coefficient in front of the zinc is one, uh, we can leave that negative 80.7 kilojoules alone. In other words, if we had a coefficient that wasn't one, we would have to take that amount of heat and divide it by two because we want the amount of heat that's released for the chemical reaction as it is written in that balanced chemical equation. Okay, so thank you for watching. Uh, that is constant pressure calorimetry. Again, it's all used to find delta H for a chemical reaction. Remember, delta H, change in enthalpy. Heat absorbed or released, in this case, released under conditions of constant pressure. And again, since we have heat being released, that tells us that we this reaction is exothermic. It's releasing heat, so we call that an exothermic chemical reaction, meaning we have a negative delta H value. All right, so that was all, so see you next time.